you know, that, that's what I want to know. How did yesterday go when you announced something like that? How does, how does that go actually? Yeah, it's, uh, we've done different variations of a big launch, probably eight or nine different types of launches. This is the first time we've launched anything where we've given, um, just regular people, individuals, uh, a chance to, to pay for something. And anytime you do that as a company that's been around, that's offered some things for free, uh, uh, you know, there's going to be an expected, you know, kind of a knee jerk, you know, reaction from a number of folks where it feels like we're, we're doing something to punish them. Right. Uh, and, and I think what we found so far and, and what's, you know, always, always really the case, I think with things like this is that it ends up being a, a very vocal minority, but we've got to listen to them. You know, they're, they, they have reason to be uh, upset about something and we want to kind of react and be flexible. But on the whole, uh, it's either been positive. And I think for every person that's upset about it, we have 10 or 20 people that have signed up and started paying for it. So, right. um, you know, I think one of our biggest challenges is because we're a business that's been around for you know, almost 10 years now, uh, there's just a, a whole lot of surface area and as we figure out, okay, what's part of what we call the pro plan and what, what's free and, you know, what do businesses do? Really trying to organize that in a way that can be communicated simply. You know, we, you know, we, we live and breathe it every day, so it makes sense to us. Yeah. But for our users, uh, you know, we don't expect them to be thinking if all day every day, you know. In fact, it's actually, we'll probably get to this later, it's, it's maybe better if they maybe think if a couple times a month and we're just right. kind of there in the background working. Uh, they've got a lot to kind of parse to figure out, does this make sense for them? And so I think that's big going to be our kind of challenge over the next week or two is really being clear because we, we think the way we've done it is uh, it makes sense and it, it's really fair. And I think it's really compelling in terms of the new things we've launched, but mm -hmm. that's never an easy thing to communicate. Communication right. is difficult no matter what it is you're communicating. And uh, if you've got a product that's evolved over 10 years, it's especially difficult. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so I, I will go through the questions. I kind of went off there a little oh, bit. No worries. I, I was just interested, like personally, I was interested because yeah, I mean, you're going from this free service or that's how it's looked to all your users. And mm -hmm. now you go and you kind of, you, you add in this whole pro plan and, and I don't think necessarily everybody understands everything just yet that is being offered as part of that. So mm -hmm. um, I, I had some questions about that as I kind of went through it this morning and, and late last night, late last night. Um, so, but, but where, you know, you kind of touched on it already. Where do you want if this and that to fit in people's everyday lives? Yeah. Uh, for us, uh, it really depends on who you are. And that's and it's a big part of what we're doing with Pro actually is acknowledging that there are different types of people uh, that we want to kind of fit in in a slightly different way. Uh, and the strategy for us really for, I mean, maybe since the beginning, but certainly uh, has, has really come to a head over the last two or three years has been to help the brands themselves, businesses, whether they're a smart home business or personal banking or your mm -hmm. you know, electricity company or utility. Uh, actually use the if platform not only as a way to discover you know what are some of their most you know kind of passionate and, and, and you know creative users actually looking to integrate their services with but then to actually build those integrations themselves you know almost kind of build the best version of them that only those businesses can build because of all the kind of access they have uh, and then present those integrations uh, to their users in a very kind of native way relative to their experience. So whether that's an email or uh, in their mobile app, um, and we'll talk about some examples here later on in the show, but you know, the, the idea of IFT as kind of this, you know, people have called us a connective tissue uh, is, is, is actually a pretty good description. And we focus a lot of our time building all the tools around that connective tissue for those brands themselves. Okay. And to get to the answer to your question here, that really means that, you know, we want to kind of take a little bit of a backseat uh, to these brands uh, relative to 
their customers, their end users' lives. Uh, we kind of want to be the, the trusted, you know, al almost kind of the trusted brand that enables that integration, uh, not necessarily uh, the tool, the third party tool that somebody has to go to to connect to other things. So right. the you know kind of X for Y sometimes I use is like uh, PayPal for integrations. You know, some, you know, something you trust, you know, you don't open the PayPal app all day, every day to check what's happening. You maybe go there if there's a problem or if you have a question about something, but largely you use PayPal as you're using some other product or service. Yeah. And we see it, uh, at least in terms of, of that uh, uh, strategy, uh, taking a very similar position. Now that said, Pro is very different from that. And I'm sure we'll talk a lot about Pro, but I think part of why we're doing Pro is that we realize we that kind of over rotated, you know, there's a, there's a kind of a symbiotic relationship between, you know, pro users, those creatives that are, are willing to go out of their way to download the if app, to, you know, have an idea for how they think their services should work together and actually build that, uh, you know, and that actually influences the brands themselves. And we realized we actually kind of almost over invested or, or ignored those users for too long. Uh, and Pro is really a, a step towards trying to, to get back in touch with them uh, and, and really deliver a lot of the things that they've been asking for for years in a way that allows us to continue to reinvest in that relationship over time. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. You did, you did touch on this a little bit. Like, was that the original goal of If This Then That? And, and how is it different today if it wasn't? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say we started out to solve a problem uh, and that problem still exists. You know, it, it, you know, we've made a lot of progress towards solving it, but we, we also knew it, you know, it was one of those problems that was only going to get bigger. In fact, that's, that's the best kind of business to build is, is around a problem like that where, you know, it, it's almost so large it's unsolvable. Mm -hmm. But if you can even just make a little bit of progress, that should be really valuable. Um, and that problem is, you know, in, in one word, incompatibility, <laughs> you know, that the, everything is going to be an internet service. In fact, a lot of things already are. The vast majority of the things we interact with day to day, and that, you know, we're on video here, so you can kind of pick out anything in my background, anything in your background, the vast majority of that stuff isn't yet connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it's still, even though it no longer sounds visionary to say that everything is going to connect to the internet. It's still almost inconceivable. You know, if every you, most of the things we use and interact with every day, physical or, you know, abstract digital services, uh, aren't yet really truly internet services yet. What does that world look like? And if it continues like it is today, if, if it isn't successful, um, if it's really up to the big brands, uh, and you know, the way that businesses and services form today, uh, it's going to be an incompatible mess. Uh, it's just going to get worse and worse. So that's the problem we've always been looking to solve. How we solve it has evolved quite a bit. So. Okay. That's, I mean, I really like that, right? Yeah. You started out as a problem and, and I mean, actually that's why I started Automate Your Life as I saw incompatibility growing and, and a real struggle throughout the market. Um, to identify what works together, what doesn't. And it was just something uh, right away that I grabbed onto. And I think my third video was something to do with if this, then that. And that's, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it didn't go very far because it was my third video, but that's another story <laughs> for another day. <laughs> well, that, that, that's okay. I, I, you, you stuck with it. it <laughs> Here we are. for you now. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so, Okay. You, you talked about the focus on companies that you've had over the last few years, but what are the costs for them? I've seen some of your plans and it, it, you know, there was a story around Tuya or, or the smart life mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. as, as the automators know it. Um, you know, and it, it kind of went back and forth and it sounded like they had too many costs because it was a per user thing and they're a very different business. So, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are the costs to those companies to join your service and to take advantage of it? Yeah. And I, I want to make sure and address the two you stuff uh, specifically. So maybe I'll kind of answer it in two parts here. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, the first thing to acknowledge is, you know, if started out as an ecosystem, 
uh, where we had a very strong hunch that as we built this ecosystem, as we got to some critical mass, that the people that were gonna get the most value out of what we're doing was gonna be the brands. And that's why we started the business around the brands. Uh, but we didn't start that business until about two and a half years ago. So we had already reached you know, critical mass. And in fact, we, we kind of had to. Without the other brands on the platform, we don't do anything. <laughs> Right. You know, it's like it's like PayPal, but it doesn't work with any banks. Yep. You know, so uh, uh, that that really was kind of a, a chicken and egg problem there uh, where it was, there was very clearly a, a, an order that had to be followed. Um, uh, and so we kind of got some chickens or eggs, you know, you know, which one you want to start with. Don't want to <laughs> discriminate there. Uh, and we turned around and said, you know, OK, brands, you know, we want to do right by you we want to continue to create value but part of that value for brands is that our ecosystem is going to continue to grow over time and so you can see how if we charge too much if if, if there's only a premium offering you know hundreds of thousands of dollars for those brands well that can really limit our audience pretty quickly in terms of other brands that join if you're just two people in the proverbial garage you're not going to be able to pay us. If you don't have any users yet, you may not have any revenue and you're not going to work with it. And so it actually wasn't until the beginning of this year that we actually figured that out. We differentiated and created enough value on the high end. And that's what we call connect. So uh, think of the, the, the tiers for businesses as there's, there's just three tiers. There's the developer tier. And that's what most people associate with you know, being on IFT, your logos on IFT, you work with IFT, you can tell other people you work with IFT, other people can create applets uh, uh, with your brand on IFT. You as a brand can't publish those applets yet, you know, with your brand's name on it, uh, but you can be a part of it, your APIs can be there, other brands could take advantage of it as well. And that's $199 a year flat fee. It's really, we don't even think of it as uh, a business for us as much as that price is more to kind of keep the quality and really the seriousness of the brands that work with it high, kind of like the Apple developer fee. You know, I, I think that was a really smart move. You know, if you're, if you're not willing to put down a credit card and spend a little bit of money, you're probably not serious enough to build something that other people are going to, are going to really like. Right. Um, and then from there it goes to team and enterprise. And, and that's where this product called connect comes in. It allows, brands to build fully featured integrations, you know, way beyond if this and that, uh, and, and present those integrations to their users in their own native experiences. So some examples would be like iRobot. Uh, they've got a number of integrations uh, uh, in their app, I think with like August Lock, Live 360, and you basically just toggle those on. It looks like you're in the iRobot experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we handle all the API connectivity in the back end. Uh, and you're, you know, you're back into the iRobot experience uh, without really having to know very much, if anything at all, about if to make that work. Wow. Um, so that's, that's a great example of a, a business, you know, on some of these, you know, the team or the enterprise tier, mm -hmm. uh, taking advantage of kind of bringing the if ecosystem into their own products and experiences. And we charge for both team and enterprise uh, a per user fee. Very wow. similar to if you're familiar with like Plaid.io, actually does something very similar with connecting bank accounts. Okay. Uh, there's kind of a per user fee. Uh, and that's, that's how that business actually scales. And so we now have that differentiation that allows for brands to be a part of the ecosystem uh, for a very low and fact nominal fee. And then for brands to kind of take full advantage of the ecosystem. Uh, and that's really the real business on uh, right. the brand side of things for us. Okay. That's, um, so you have a number of those in-app integrations. Those are in native apps that you are actually powering. And that's when you mentioned kind of the PayPal methodology here, right? Yeah. And it's You're uh, just powering okay. that and nobody here on, on the side of the smart home or anyone who owns an iRobot knows that we don't have any idea that that's going on. Yeah, and it's not kind of fully hidden yet. I mean, I, the goal is to get it to where it's, it's seamless, you know, and that's how we get the most number of people that can use it. Uh, but, you know, like there's, there's a little bit of ift in there and it, it's kind of a little bit more like PayPal now. Uh, and in fact, there's a real 
uh, I think, uh, argument for it being like that for a long time because it actually allows users to kind of uh, take advantage of some a snowball effect, if you will. One of the biggest problems with you know solving this compatibility issue uh, is authenticating and logging into stuff just sucks, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so uh, in the same way that you know, if you think about the actual barrier or or amount of effort to do something, you know, kind of think about PayPal because it's maybe a little bit easier. Most people are familiar with that. Uh, using PayPal to pay for the very first time is actually harder than just entering your credit card information another yeah, time. Way harder. <laughs> you know, once you do it just once, it then becomes dramatically easier or it should. You push the button and you're done. You know, hopefully you're signed into your PayPal account. And we're looking to kind of create a very similar effect here. You know, that first time there's a little bit more overhead, but if you're planning on integrating, you know, your calendar or your vacuum or your car, you know, whatever it is, more than once with anything else, mm -hmm. uh, it should be drastically easier uh, to do it with it. Yeah, that makes sense. I didn't answer the Tuya part oh, yes. of that last question. Do yeah. you want to go back to that now? Sure. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I want to make sure I address that directly. Sure. Okay, cool. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'll, no, no, I'll go remember back. that question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I totally forgot too. <laughs> you got me yeah, interested. Uh, I, I can talk about this stuff forever. So it's actually one of my problems. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got to be more succinct here. The, uh, you know, so to talk about Tuya specifically. So one, we love Tuya. Uh, I think it very, you know, kind of unfortunately, um, there was uh, some miscommunication, in fact, not really between Ift and Tuya as much as I think uh, a lot of users got involved or, you know, folks like yourself, uh, yep. you know, speculating, you know, kind of asking questions. And I think some emails went out <laughs> ahead of us really trying to kind of come to an agreement on how we would work together. Mm -hmm. And all the while, you know, we, we have this, you know, the price is really not an issue, $199 uh, just to, to have your brand on if unlimited number of users. Uh, and as we are really working to figure out how should we work together? How do we, you know, frankly, how do we, how do we renew the deal for this year? Uh, which one of those makes the most sense? Uh, unfortunately, before we came to an agreement on that, uh, the end users got involved and, and probably got a little bit too much information or some, some information that wasn't very clear. Uh, and so long story short, we, we figured it out uh, because at the end of the day, we're, we're not looking to just, raise prices, raise prices, raise prices, hold people hostage. Uh, that's no way to build an ecosystem or a network as much as helping people really understand, Hey, do they want to, you know, are they ready to go big on what we call connect and bring some of those integrations into their app? Or are they, are they okay with just being on the IFT ecosystem? We of course want them to go big, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we, we, we don't want to make that a difficult conversation. And I don't think we were having a difficult conversation as much as, I think users just kind of got a little bit too much info too soon. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's uh, hopefully all cleared up now. We're, we're going to work with Tuya for the foreseeable future. Uh, everything's good there. Um, and yeah, I think it's a, another thing where we see, you know, brands come in and out of the ecosystem, more, more coming in. I think we've added over a hundred uh, new services just this year alone. Um, but, you know, sometimes, Products change, businesses change, they go in and out of business. Uh, and it's, it's one of the problems uh, uh, that kind of adds to this larger compatibility problem is as businesses change, strategies change, products go off the market, integrations with those products uh, then uh, become a lot riskier. Uh, and that's part of what we're trying to do is actually uh, uh, lower that risk acknowledge the fact that things change all the time, you know, and uh, if you're using IFT to build or power those integrations, uh, the cost to your business, if something does change, is much lower, uh, as, as well as the overhead to, to initially build that integration as well. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> and here you are talking to here you are talking to someone who's going to publish this to a bunch of users after, <laughs> after yeah. that. Cause I mean, that's, that is what happened, right? Like it just it went out, it exploded and nobody had yeah. actual good information. I just, I feel like I just got the whole story right, right here, Linda. Like and it wasn't, it, and it wasn't super complicated, but I, 
the other thing too is I honestly, I, I, uh, I think I, I went right up to the kind of publish, whether it was on a tweet or a video a couple of times, really trying to just make it clear, mm -hmm. but I, that's just not our style. Like I, I think for us, we want to be neutral. We really want to kind of do right by users, brands. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just felt like one of those things where there's kind of enough mud being slung around that the only way for us to respond was to sling mud. So yeah, uh, better that we just kind of got the deal done. Uh, we're, we're continuing to work together and, uh, you know, I think move, move on from there. So rather, rather than speak too much, we just kind of speak through action. So, well, no, the, I mean, the fact that you managed to get to you in there and it sounds like that was never really at risk. It's just what level, right? Um, yeah. The fact that you brought them back in and that they uh, cooperated with IFT, uh, I mean, from a smart home perspective, it's, it's one of the most important things. There are so mm -hmm. many people who've gone out and they've bought a $10 light bulb or a $10 smart plug, you know, and they've, they've put a lot of these throughout their homes and there's not that many integrations with if this, then that, that allow it to work with other systems. And mm -hmm. they're starting uh, smart life, sorry, the smart life brand. They, they don't have that many integrations, right? They, they're starting to break that down a little bit, mm -hmm. getting a few more options, but the reliance on that one um, was so high and the panic around it was so high. I mean, I, I felt it. And if I'm yeah. feeling it in my comment section, I, I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. it. So yeah, well, I, I apologize, you know, yeah, I'm sure there's, you know, I, we reflected a little bit on it as a, as a team. Um, we didn't come away with a whole lot that we could do differently, but at the end of the day, it's still like, it just sucks to, to be in that position to invest as a customer. Uh, mm -hmm. even though they're $10, you buy enough of them, it's still quite a bit of money. Yeah. And you're looking down the barrel of, Oh man, none of this is going to work. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, the exact opposite type of experience we want folks to have. So we're going to do whatever we can to minimize, uh, situations like that in the future. Good. Okay. So yeah, the, the costs, uh, I think more like eventually I want to talk about the pro, the monthly, the $10, in the end cost, mm -hmm. but the, the cost for standard, that's $0. You get to create three applets of your own, but then the, the, the unlimited applets, uh, mm -hmm. where are those coming from? Where do those get created? Yeah. So, and then this is one of the things where we're kind of actively figuring out how to be crystal clear about this. So the difference here is there's applets that are created uh, kind of if this and that style, you kind of click through, you select a service, you select another service, you know, with pro now you can have this and that, and then, you know, so that you can select more than just two. Um, those are, are, are really the heart of what we call created by you or created by me. And that's really that the users that are both thinking about how they want things to work together and also willing to kind of invest the time, even though it's a small amount of time, invest the time in actually creating that, customizing that for their own setup. Uh, those are those are pros or, or potential pros for us. Um, what we've seen over the last five or six years is, you know, we've kind of begun to uh, put our toe into the water of a, a much more mainstream audience. Mm -hmm. You know, folks that, you know, aren't actively thinking about compatibility. You know, they, they, they maybe buy something on a whim for their smart home and maybe they serendipitously stumble upon the, the fact that they can connect that to something else they have. Uh, and that kind of that serendipitous discovery uh, is what we call published applets. Okay. Um, and, and increasingly, that's also these in-app integrations. You know, those are called connections, but you don't, you don't need to know that as a user. You know, they're, they're, they look like applets uh, for all intents and purposes once you download the IFT app. Um, and those users are largely just finding things. Uh, and those applets that they find uh, in the if app can be published by other users. Um, and that's still something in, in you know, we're, 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 I think also have done a poor job of investing in the tools to allow users to publish applets. So much of our time has been spent 
building those tools out for the brands. And so that's another thing we're working to bring over to users as well. Um, but they can also be published by brands once they get into that team and enterprise tier. Okay. Uh, and those so often end ends up being, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, it is the, those next levels for them to create those specialized applets for integrations. Okay. Yeah. And, th and those often end up being uh, the, not necessarily the best. I don't want to say some applets are best or worse, but you know, it, it, the brands have a vested interest in making sure they're good mm -hmm. and that they work over time. If there's a, if somebody adds a new trigger or a new action or adds a new ingredient to a trigger, the brands are incentivized to make those better. And in fact, you, you can give them feedback as a user. If you're somebody that's turned on one of those applets, you can kind of write in and say, Hey, this is working or isn't working. Um, and then they do a pretty good job. We see, you know, hundreds of, of edits every day uh, to those applets. So they're kind of constantly improving and then users get those improvements too. So it, you know, it's almost like a, a, a subscription or there's a connection there between the original applet that's published and the thing that all these people are turning on. And the vast majority of users on if today, that's the only type of applet they're turning on. Um, now that said, these pros that create their own, it's still millions of people uh, because you know, we, we have a, a large audience uh, and they often end up being incredibly va valuable for the brands to kind of watch and see, hey, what, what, what are people trying to do with our product? Uh, and then is there something that we can do uh, and maybe do it slightly a little bit more custom or special uh, to allow everybody else to take advantage of it? And that's the difference between created applets and, and published applets. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm learning a lot that I didn't expect here in this conversation. Well, it's good. This is good. good. I'm not just rambling. <laughs> no, no, I'm learning a lot. That's, it's very good. Um, okay. In, so, oh, go, ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say that, you know, I think part of your question, I think, was getting at how do those two things relate to this pro plan? And that's you know, one of the challenges that we have in communicating this is that there's a, there's a limit in place now. Uh, and we, there, you could imagine there was a whole lot of debate internally about whether this made sense or not. And we, we ultimately thought it did. But that limit to three applets as a standard kind of free user only applies to the applets that you create yourself. Now there's a small caveat here, and I know uh, for your audience, they're, they're okay to go way into the detail, so hopefully this isn't too much information. As a user, if you create an applet and publish it, and then use it, you know, you creating, you know, it's almost kind of like eating your own, <laughs> eating your own lunch there, that also counts. Okay. Uh, so you can use other people's or their brand's applets, right. uh, but you know, we, we thought that was kind of this weird loophole where, uh, you know, the, you could kind of create it and then, publish it and then use it yourself. Uh, <laughs> That's not something I would have thought about, but I bet you yeah. there are people who would. So Yeah, yeah. It's, it kind of reminds me there's this Beavis and Butthead episode, and I'm dating myself here, okay. where they bought and they, they were selling chocolate candy bars as a, some kind of fundraiser, and they bought it, bought and sold it back and forth between themselves for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's kind of the loophole. And uh, Again, the, 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 the big thing about pro is we don't want this to be seen as a punishment. And, it, and it's not even just us being greedy as much as we looked at that under investment over the last two or three years in this you know, small audience of pro users that were still dramatically important for our business, for the ecosystem, uh, I think to really you know, bring full resources to bear just made sense to figure out a way to say, okay, well, these pro users that are really getting a whole lot more out of what if does, can we create, you know, a, a low priced but valuable package for them that allows us to kind of reinvest that revenue in that audience specifically over time. Does this, does pro represent all the new features that are coming to if this than that, or is there more that people should know? Yeah, I, I hope we're just scratching the surface. So first, the, the, the things that you can do with Pro, uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll summarize this as quick as possible. So, you know, for the first time uh, in IFT history, users can do if this, you know, and this, uh, and that, and that, and that. 
Uh, it's not exactly like that in the interface, but we introduce what we call queries, uh, filter, uh, and then we, we also introduce the ability to do multiple actions over time. And so that really kind of opens up the possibilities for what you can do with an applet. And uh, the other things that we're, we're bundling in with Pro are faster applet execution speed, uh, which uh, we, we found a lot of people are, are really pumped about, uh, as well as uh, dedicated support. So mm -hmm. the ability to write in and say, hey, this isn't working, can you help me with it? Uh, and and talk, to, talk to someone on our team. Um, that's hopefully just the beginning. Uh, we're, we're already actively working on you know, making filter a lot easier to use. Uh, so you know, that's a, a small improvement, but one that we, we've already identified as much needed. Uh, and from there, I, I think you know, just top of mind, some of the things, you know, we're, we're kind of waiting for more feedback after the pro launch to really begin to prioritize things. Uh, but the things that we, we've learned so far are some type of delay, the ability to add some arbitrary amount of time between you know, you know, when you, you know you want something to happen and when it actually happens, uh, or when it happens again, perhaps, you know, people are talking about, I want to mm -hmm. turn on the yep. lights, but only for 30 minutes, so can you turn them off for me later? Yep. Um, uh, the ability to have multiple accounts, uh, and this, I think, is less of a problem in, in the smart home, but in some cases, there, there's still an issue there. If you have two different accounts for the same service, you know, uh, it largely only works with one account. You can kind of authenticate once. I, uh, I'm so a YouTuber. A, that is one of the most painful things. There you go. Because, yeah. I mean, I got to sign yeah. up for four, if this and that account. Sorry, if accounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, but, but what doesn't work is signing up for four accounts, right? Like no. there's something broken there. Uh, and that's something that we, we, we want to add. Um, and also, I mentioned earlier on in the conversation, a lot of the tools around publishing applets. So not only just making it easier, like right now, like you've really got to dig to figure out how to get there. Uh, and we're going to fix that pretty quickly. But uh, also getting the people, whether they're end users or brands, a whole lot more and higher fidelity feedback around the people, you know, from the people that are actually enabling those applets. And so that's one of the reasons why we're confident in kind of this hard to explain uh, divide between unlimited, you know, free forever using published applets and creating your own is because we're, we're very confident that we can make the publishing and then the using of a published applet so much better over time. Uh, and so I think building those tools to allow people to kind of get that feedback and improve things, even get recognized. Like right now, we even uh, temporarily remove some of the public profile stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're somebody that published applets, uh, you, you had like a little bit of a profile page and, you know, we're never going to be a social network, but, you know, it was a way for people to be recognized as like, hey, I created the, you know, the most used iRobot applet, 100,000 people use this thing, you know, and that, that's pretty cool. That's a big uh, actually to yeah, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of developers. Totally. Love that, right? Oh, totally. I mean, there's, a, I think there's no, there's, there's no amount of kind of social recognition that you can put a value on. Like, it's just like, uh, and it's different for different people. Um, uh, I'm that way too. Uh, people like, like one of my tweets, like, that's really cool. I don't know if I can, I, I'm sure you can pay for that, but you know, I it wouldn't feel the same. It wouldn't feel the same. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, at least uh, uh, a smattering of some of the things that we'd like to do uh, quickly. Um, and, and that's again, back to the point of pro it's, it's not like this is the feature set pay us or else it's no, this is the beginning of something uh, us kind of reinvesting in an audience, really the audience that got us here, that made it possible uh, and doing that in a way that's sustainable uh, and that should improve quite a bit more over time. Uh, and so hopefully what is part of Pro is just the beginning and uh, not all of those things I mentioned are, are going to be part of Pro that you have paper. You know, a lot of those things will be things that people can just use regardless of whether they, they subscribe. Um, yeah, we, we, we want to make sure and invest in users really just as much as we're investing in brands because they really work together. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, I mean, it's a really interesting story, actually. It feels like, it, and I'm just trying to summarize so that I understand it, Lyndon. Mm -hmm. 
it feels like if this and that started one day to solve compatibility problems and then they got turned to focus on developing, you know, more, better, stronger relationships with companies. And I, I remember early, early on, like some of the ability to publish those applets when you created one. And I think I even did one mm -hmm. early on myself. And, but, but as you did that, your funding was really, or your, your money, your company's money was really being focused on the companies, getting the brands in, building these brand relationships. And so now you want to work more with the users and you need some funding for that to direct towards improving things more for the users. And you've started with a feature set that, yeah, I agree. Lots of people have been asking for, I mean, conditional statements is everything. Yeah. I, as far as I've had feedback within the first hour of launching in 2010, you know, so. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do I kind of have that timeline just as a general sense, right? Oh, you're, you're, you're totally right. And we don't think it's been a mistake that we've, you know, focused on brands as much as it's really been to the detriment of users. That's, that's, we focus on brands and, and not users almost exclusively. And the, the other thing I'll say is, uh, it's really kind of two parts. There's a funding element to it, uh, but I think it's also more of a relationship thing. And it's it's really kind of the the thing that we learned by focusing on brands is as they became customers, well, we wanted to make sure that they were happy, that there's something very clean and easy about that. <laughs> they're customers, if they're happy, they pay. If not, they don't pay. <laughs> I, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, I, I'm not like some crazy capitalist, but it kind of is a, it's a great little system that we figured out here. <laughs> and, and, uh, and honestly, like we want to have that same relationship with users. It makes things so much easier as we're thinking about how to prioritize our time. Uh, if somebody is willing to pay for something. We want to make sure it's the best possible thing. And we want to do that even if you're not paying too, but geez, it, it's, it's easy to kind of get a little bit pushed aside there. Uh, uh, and it, it's just the nature of that relationship. There's, um, there's a statement that somebody I've been working with lots on YouTube, his name's Tim Schmoyer. And, um, you know, he says, in the end, you have to make money to continue doing what you're loving, what you love. Right. And, and I think, so we've been tracking a little bit companies leaving, coming and going on the platform. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to, I honestly, uh, it's a little hard to track with with you guys there's not a lot of announcements with things coming in and out or at least not ones we could find so we we actually started a page on our website that is trying to track the in and out um mm -hmm. because it's a big deal for for our our audience that's maybe just something i would give to you and say mm -hmm. like don't don't take over you know our website because we're getting good traffic on that page but mm -hmm. you know some way for us to know when these companies are coming and going i think would be a big deal even something yeah. in advance and and i know it'll cause pr nightmare but in the same breath if i have a month and and you know samsung has been trying to do this with smart things here are months in advance, things are changing. And so come mm -hmm. the day when it actually changes, it's not such a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it seems to lessen the blow a little bit over time for them. So I don't know if there's mm -hmm. something you can do around that. And I, I wonder what is going on most of the time? What do you see most of the time with these companies leaving? Is it just them going out of business? Largely, or like I think more common, uh, especially because uh, I would say probably the uh, more than half of the brands on If Today are part of a larger organization, you know, and an organization that's not going out of business anytime soon. Mm -hmm. But their product strategy or how they're investing in their products changes over time. And so, especially with physical products, and I think this is one of the biggest problems, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know, Brian, this is uh, your your program is mostly about smart home uh, and if has d developed a huge kind of reputation in that world. But we've always tried to maintain, you know, it, it's Internet services and some of those are devices that connect to the Internet and some of those are just like pure Internet. Um, and uh, I think the one of the biggest problems is 
businesses are still looking to find sustainable ways to maintain a connected device for the entire life cycle of that device. And I'm sure you've talked about this or thought about this a lot yourself, so I'm not telling you anything new here, but that's just, a, it's a really tricky thing to do uh, because so much of the margin up front after the initial purchase is then eaten away over time mm -hmm. uh, by maintaining that service. Uh, and so I think it's one of the things that actually we're, we're uh, excited to see people starting to kind of figure out and think more about or find other ways uh, to create value because that device is connected. I'll, I'll give you a good example. Like one of the uh, uh, enterprise customers we work with is a, a utility company out of Oklahoma, Oklahoma Gas and Electric. Uh, and surprisingly, you know, very innovative in Oklahoma. You know, who, who would have thought it? I'm from Texas, so I, there's no, I, I can't, you know, nothing negative there as much as yeah. Yeah. surprise, surprise. Some of the, yeah. actually some of the most exciting kind of utility stuff is actually happening in the Midwest. Um, and, uh, you know, they sent an email out powered by IFT to, to their users. It says, hey, if you have one of these brands of connected thermostats, if you're willing to give us access to it and allow us to make minute adjustments, especially at peak times, you're going to save money on your electricity bill. Uh, and you know, you can see that play out over time is, well, geez, you know, how much money can you save? And does that justify buying a connected thermostat? At some point it probably does. Uh, so I think there's some really exciting things out there that can make the smart home, you know, ecosystem a whole lot more sustainable for these companies. Uh, and we want to help be a part of that. You know, you can't monetize your API directly via if yet, but it's something we've talked to a lot of brands about. Uh, there, there's definitely interest there. I saw you address this a little bit. Peter had sent me uh, kind of some of the, some of your live talks and you talked about chip. So how do you mm -hmm. see that kind of a, a new standard coming out? How do you see it impacting if this than that in the smart mm -hmm. home space? Yeah. You know what, I, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist and I'm going to say that and I'm going to say I'm a little skeptical, <laughs> but not because I, I wouldn't want it to work, right? Like, uh, and I think there's been like, what was the last thing that Google was behind? They called it, I think Weave was a big one and then Apple was going to storm the world with HomeKit and yeah, like, I, there needs to be more things like chip. Let me say that. And, and, it, it, and at some point, if one of them works, I think it, it kind of floats all boats, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think one of the things, one of the reasons I'm skeptical is any kind of consortium of big companies with, you know, varying degrees of actual effort, you know, kind or, of, uh, you know effort or alignment in terms yeah. of what they're actually trying to do. That just takes a long time. <laughs> uh, you know, like, so like, I, I don't even know if there are chip compatible devices or right. services on the market yet. Uh, I'm sure they're coming soon. Uh, but when are they going to be ubiquitous? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that the biggest problem I have with it, uh, and it goes back to, you know, the IFT problem, which is compatibility. Uh, the fact that it's very narrowly kind of oriented around the home doesn't mean I'm sure there's ways that it might be compatible with other things. But it's, you know, it's in the yeah. name. <laughs> yeah. So it uh, yeah. means that it's kind of missing the point, right? Like uh, what we see on IFT is the majority of the things that people are connecting their smart home devices to are actually other internet services. There's yeah. certainly other devices too, yeah. but, you know, things like the weather or things like their calendar or saving things at Google Drive and Dropbox. Like, and so, you know, there's got to be something that's a little bit higher level that makes it all work together. Otherwise, we're kind of still treading water with that same problem. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, I, I have a lot of uh, people on the channel. They come on and they say they've attached a video publishing to a video of mine publishing to a light bulb, right? So they have a certain light bulb do something based on that. And they're using if this then that for that. Mm -hmm. One of the mm -hmm. things I'm using the most is the, the weather. Uh, I think yeah. it's weather underground on, totally. if, on if, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the biggest things I'm using. It can create automation triggers throughout the rest of my home. So, uh, no, okay. I get that. You're actually kind of more saying, you know what, they, it's great in the home. It's great to maybe bring 
a lot of the home together, but those external services, that's what you guys are bringing. I did have a specific question around what gets us faster execution and what are the differences that we yeah. should be. Yeah, this is, uh, and this is one where we also kind of struggled to figure out how to communicate it. We, we ended up just saying faster. Yep. You can look on your applet and see a little bit more kind of fine grain in terms of minutes and seconds. There's broadly, you know, two types of applets as it relates to speed. And a lot of it is dictated by the trigger itself. Like that's the event that that's really kind of the biggest limiting factor. Once, you know, once we know your video is published or once we know someone rings the doorbell, the if part and actually running the action that happens all, you know, almost all of, you know, I think it's like 99% of the time within milliseconds, you know, tens, hundreds of milliseconds at most. But the trigger itself is, is the, that gating factor. And there's two types of triggers. There's polling. Now, it's no longer the majority of triggers, uh, both in terms of just number of triggers and in terms of actual executions on the platform. Uh, but it's still quite a bit. And there's still some of the most popular services, you know, things like YouTube or Facebook. Uh, they, they have APIs that are, you know, less real time and much more like you kind of have to ask the question over and over and over again. Hey, did Brian publish a new video? Did Brian publish a new video? To okay. so, yeah. Yeah. So if you only publish on Wednesdays and Sundays, well, we're asking that question hundreds of times every day and getting the same answer. Uh, and, uh, you know, the way that fix that long term is services, you know, changing their APIs or plugging in, you know, we have a thing we call the, the real time API. Uh, and that's what most of ser the services that build on FD use now today. Um, and so what we're doing there is we're running that much faster. We're essentially asking the question more. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons why it, it makes sense to charge for this is because it costs us more money. Every time we ask the question, it, you know, fractions of a penny, but you do that billions of times, it adds up. Uh, and so we're just asking that question a whole lot more. I think we're starting at, you know, moving it from sometimes the upper bound was an hour to within five minutes. We want to move that even closer, uh, but acknowledge that the long-term solution is to get all these APIs kind of working in this new, more modern fashion because everybody saves money and everything is faster when you do that. Mm -hmm. The other type of applet, I, I, I mentioned it in explaining polling, but it, it's, a, it's a trigger. Uh, uh, it's an applet with a trigger that's real time. Uh, and, and I said, those usually happen within milliseconds uh, and any real problem there often ends up being either a problem of uh, uh, in queuing, you know, we may be, a lot of people are ringing doorbells at the same time or publishing videos. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we have to make some decisions and even the services themselves are making similar decisions. Which one of these do I do first? Uh, and what we're doing for pros for those real-time applets is saying, well, hey, well, we're going to do the pro ones first. Uh, and that shouldn't necessarily create a, a dramatic uh, change for free users. Like it's not going to make theirs necessarily worse. Right. Uh, but, you know, I think on average we're saying, well, pros are going to get the best performance and free folks are going to get somewhere in the middle. Um, uh, and so we hope that that ends up being you know, a better kind of service level guarantee. And that's where we want to go is get to the point where we're able to say, not only can you rely on if to make sure it works every time, uh, it's also going to work on time. And we want to be a lot more transparent with the other responsibilities across the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. you know, I mentioned the if part, and we're not always, we're not always perfect. That's for damn sure. But, you know, we're such a small fraction of the overall delay when it comes to speed. Yeah. And it's often these other services that yeah. really need to, to get a little bit more attention uh, to help them uh, prioritize updating their APIs or, or fixing a problem. Wow. Okay. I mean, I, I know you've got to go. Uh, I could sit here, honestly, I probably have another 30 or 40 questions for you. Well, to be honest, Linda. We'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think that would be great. What, you know, I had read a lot of the documentation. I mean, you clarified a lot of things here for me. Um, and just understanding the background a little bit. So I think I can, I can help people understand more where it fits and where it can fit in the future. Um, yeah, I think, I think you've done a good job there. I mean, lots of this stuff, 
yeah, you got to get it out there. You guys got to find yeah. a way to get this knowledge out there. And I remember reading a little bit, I think it was in the developer community or the developer uh, documentation. I remember reading about kind of how the transactions were working and mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm a computer engineer, so I get some of this stuff. I, I haven't been coding for years, but um, you know, I, I just remember going, it's, always going to be on the trigger service where all these delays are coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's the processing on the action service as well. That is delaying these people in their homes. Okay. So, but you get all the bad press in the middle Mm -hmm. for your Mm -hmm. (laughs) little Mm -hmm. handling of what is probably not, uh, you're probably never getting full on your service or or running behind on your service. I mean, um, so it's just, it's funny and you, you got to get that out there because I think like I look at wise, okay. And mm-hmm. wise gets, uh, well, Google gets bad press from wise because of wise's service. Mm-hmm. Amazon gets bad press because of wise's service. Cause they mm-hmm. haven't been able to handle their growth and I get it. Mm-hmm. You get the same thing. If yeah. this, then that never works right with wise. It's not mm-hmm. you guys. I know that you got to get it out there. Um, yeah. The- yeah. We got to figure that out. I, part of our challenge though is, you know, those are customers. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and that's, but. and that, that's a perfect, it's, and it's actually the perfect segue because it, it kind of begins to, to connect the dots between why pros and brands really have this symbiotic relationship because mm-hmm. the best people to tell the brands to fix something isn't us that's it's right. the users it's yeah. their customers yeah know? and so we share that relationship and so part of pro and part of you talked about some of the things we want to build later is about connecting those dots right like we we want to step into the background mm-hmm. uh you know we don't want to have to be the bully that goes over and says you know hey make this thing work right uh, you users are already doing that they're just maybe it's not clear to them how it works or who right. they can complain to so so uh Applets, I, you got to run. Applets, mm. they should have a voting or a rating system, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So that I can say, this one isn't working just as a regular user. And if Wise's applet is getting two stars all the time, they're going to get told by that. And you're going to have statistics around that, right? Mm. Uh, two stars, big delay, right? Simple. Um, and then that helps your unlimited users, your free users, pick an applet that's going to work yeah. for them. So, anyways, that was just an idea I had. As well, we I, I, th- I think you're, I think you're onto something. Okay. <laughs> can't, yeah. can't, say, can't say too much more about that. But yeah, yeah, okay. You know, okay. Good. Good. That, that says all right. it all. <laughs> well, thank you. I know you guys got to run. Thank you so much for this. Um, honestly, I learned so much. Honestly, I can't believe you guys did this. So, thank you. Well, no. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it.